Welcome to DC Today. It's Thursday, April 4th. And actually, one of the uh, larger drawdowns actually on the day, we closed down 530 points on the Dow. But the interesting thing was we were up pretty much most of the morning until about 2 p.m. Eastern. So we were up a few hundred points actually. So the swing on the day was about 750 points from top to bottom. Um, you know, and, and I wish that there was there, you know, some sort of real definitive culprit to that or, or smoking, smoking gun. There, there was a few things. One, um, geopolitical tension with um, Israel's strike on Syria. Iran pledged to have, um, you know, a, a retaliation there. And I think there was angst there. There is a non-farm payroll number tomorrow that may have caused some just angst in the market, but I, I, I'm not sure I'm reading into that a ton. And then there was about a half a dozen different Fed presidents speaking over different engagements across the country that, frankly, most of them uh, I thought were more dovish, really. They, they were or middle of the road. They, there wasn't a whole lot of new statements. One of them in Minnesota, who uh, used to work in the building that I used to work at here in Newport Beach, um, Neil Kashkari, um, had a comment that said, I'm expecting two rate cuts for this year, but if inflation keeps trading sideways, then maybe we don't need any at all. And that, that was right around the time the market turned. But, um, you know, I don't know that that was necessarily the reason. I think it was a combination of these different things. And, and sometimes there isn't always a, a huge definitive reason when, when markets turn. But uh, nonetheless, markets sold off quite a bit. Um, uh, and, you know... So with, with that, you know, we have uh, uh, with tomorrow's payroll number, I thought I'd put a section in there just on labor force participation, because it is interesting. The the actual total rate, the labor force participation rate has has moved up. It was in the low 60s. We're at about 62.5 now with more, go, you know, everyone back at work and all that. Um, but if you look at the breakdown between the two cohorts of like 25 to 54 year olds, it's an 83% participation rate, 83 and a half. So it's a very high rate. In fact, it's the highest participation rate in that age group that we've ever had in this country. Um, whereas if you look at 54 and older, it's about 38.5, So, which is on the lower end uh, historically ever. So it's really interesting when you look at those charts right after the pandemic, how they've sort of diverged. And um, you have a greater percentage of people younger working and a lower percentage of people older not working. Um, so read into that what you will. You know, I, I, I look at it as with ZERP, you know, zero interest rates, um, asset prices have inflated, real estate, stocks, things, bonds, and, um, you know, people that are of greater age have more of those things. So I think there's a wealth effect associated with some of this stuff tied to lower interest rates. You know, it's that divergence of, of the wealth gap, in other words. Um, that could be part of it. There, there's too many different reasons to point, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. Um, we had initial jobless claims out today at 221 versus 213 expected. I'll call that similar, but technically it is inching a little higher there. And that was uh, originally this morning when the news came out, markets actually reacted positively to that, which is, you know, bad news being good news, basically um, gives the Fed more reason to, to maybe lower rates if, if jobless claims are moving higher. Um, the, the trade balance figures today, this is the third month in a row. We've had a wider uh, imbalance there. It was up 1.9%. We were at about 68 point, what was it? 1 billion versus 67.7 expected. Um, so again, a trend of, of widening, you know, widening trade ba imbalance there. Uh, trade deficit. Um, the um, uh, let's see. Tomorrow we have uh, dividend cafe coming out. Um, obviously, it's Friday, so that you'll have that live in your inbox. There's also the non-farm payroll number out tomorrow, which I think will be important, especially following today, um, which is this sort of sell-off day, to see if we get a recovery out of it. But we're expecting the unemployment rate to move from 3.9 to 3.8. So actually tick a little lower here. Um, but that'll be out with you tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, like, like I always say, you know, please reach out with questions. I, I get a lot, but I always appreciate them. And I would encourage you to reach out if you have some. And if I don't speak to you, I wish you all a great weekend. And good luck in your brackets. And watching the final four, I was too busy to get my bracket in on time with David. So I missed out on all that action. So I'm officially calling for the underdogs to sweep, which is uh, NC State, 
and uh, Alabama. So I'll take those two. Uh, well, with that, I'm going to let you go for the evening and uh, wish you well. Talk to you soon.